The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Alarm Corp's webinar for today. My name is Jeff Rushton and um, th this afternoon we'll be going through the security, uh, perimeter security products that um, are available for our company. To get started though, and uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping to start with, during the course of uh, this webinar you will be uh, muted and also there is a, a hand icon. If you wouldn't mind just clicking on that now, just so I can see that you can both hear me and see the slide that's showing here. Okay, very good. Lots of hands, so if you could put those down now that would be great. Uh, at any time during this webinar, feel free that if you have a question that you can type it in the question pane and then hit the send button. Uh, at the conclusion of this uh, uh, webinar, we'll go through those questions and um, answer those for you. So at any time, please feel free to, um, to do that and we'll um, get to those at the end of the presentation. But now to get started, the products that um, Alarm Corp currently sell, we have a, a range of outdoor PIRs. So we'll go through the ADPRO Pro Series detectors, as well as Aratec have a, a, an outdoor detector with some, I suppose, pretty special characteristics that we'll have a look at as well. Uh, we have a, a range of PE beams, uh, both from Siemens and Aratec. Uh, we won't concentrate too much on those, but there is also a range of um, digital PE beams that include microwave detectors in PE beam towers. So we'll have a, a, a bit of a look at those and, and how you can use them. Also in terms of um, fence detection systems, we have a microphonic cable system from GeoQuip and there's two products in that line that we'll be looking at today. One is the impactor which is great for uh, brick and concrete walls, especially on, on, on buildings to protect against uh, RAM rating, or the Defensor series products, which are ideal for pretty much any type of fence construction. There's also a range of seismics from Siemens that we'll have a look at, and also a vibration detector called an ES400, also from Siemens. And of course, um, like with any protection system, um, typically you'll find a, a reed switch or a roller shutter contact, or an overhead door contact, um, we'll just have a, a very brief look at the central series of um, switches. Hey, to get started, the ADPRO Pro Series. Um, there's got, they've got a range of detectors that, as it says there, are, are highly sensitive. They all stand alone. They're all passive infrared sensors, and they're specifically designed for uh, outdoor use. The housing is completely sealed uh, against any environmental condition. The sensors have um, what they call an adaptive threshold circuitry. So basically it reacts um, to changes in the environment, whether it be temperature, wind, rain, um, snow, and uh, adjusts its sensitivity and its output depending on the environment that it's in. Uh, a number of the detectors also have heaters that are thermostatically controlled to ensure that there's no internal condensation and obviously uh, to ensure that they work under extreme weather conditions. A number of the um, uh, detectors, it's got there the Pro 18, the Pro 45, the Pro 85, and the Pro 100. We've also got an anti-tamper feature built in. I mean typically as you can see with these detectors they're mounted on a bracket so it may be possible that someone could change what they're looking at and move that detector around. What the anti-tamper feature does is take a snapshot of what the, um, the, the, the image I suppose or the um, direction that the unit is um, 
uh, looking at and then if it sees a change in that image it can generate an alarm so it knows if it's been tilted left right or up and down and of course there is a separate alarm output for that. There are more than 15 models in the entire range of ADPRO detectors and we'll have a look at some of those but they range from uh, a 24 metre wide angle detector all the way up to a 150 metre curtain detector. Uh, as well as that there is a number of the detectors in the range that ha have directional control that is they can give an alarm output if a person moves either left to right or right to left um, across the detector. This does two things, it can obviously give you an output when that occurs or it, it enables a greater degree of flexibility and false alarm immunity to ensure that all we're doing is detecting from the, the fence inside rather than from inside out if that's what we would like to do. I'll just print, quickly bring up the reference chart here so you can see the variety of detectors that are available. Sorry, let's bring this across and open it up. Um, I won't go into great detail other than show you that there is a range or a, a, a number of medium range curtain detectors, of directional medium range curtain detectors, a couple of long range curtain and uh, a long range curtain that has minimal uh, dead spot under the detector as well as a variety of wide angle or volumetric uh, sensors. So you can see each of these detectors has its own coverage pattern and its own specifications down here. Um, I'm probably running over this a, a little bit quick for you but I'll, I'll show you some in the next couple of slides some examples on these detectors. As part of the ADPRO range, one of these detectors is also SCEC approved and that is the PRO 100H which is a 150 metre um, uh, curtain detector um, that can happily go into a, a type 1 installation. Let's just have a look at some of the, the pattern coverage in particular. This particular detector that we're looking at now is the Pro 250H. It has the same range and capability as the Pro 100H that is uh, SCEC uh, approved. You can see there that the, this particular detector has got a range, a maximum range of 150 metres uh, away from the unit and has a vertical curtain all of the way down to the ground with a relatively small dead spot under the detector. The, the Pro 250 has got approximately about a one metre dead spot under the um, sensor and then full coverage for the entire length of the, um, the range. If 150 metres is too long for you, you can just angle this detector down into the ground at some stage before that. So in the case of a uh, inside a perimeter wall, you could angle it at the wall or if it's a, uh, a chain mesh fence you could angle it down to hit the ground before the end of that perimeter. You can also see on here that at 100 metres its total width, width of the beam is only about 1 metre wide. At 150 metres it's just over 3 metres in, in width. So you can see that it's a very narrow beam over a very long length. So it's ideal to be placed parallel um, a, against a, a perimeter fence or a perimeter wall or anything that you want good cross detection coverage. If we have a look at one of the other sensors down at the other end of the, the spectrum, the Pro 18, this is a, a 21 meter wide angle detector. So again, 
as you can see, this detector goes out 21 metres. When we look at the, the down zone here, we can see that it is a wide angle coverage with many, many different elements on the, um, the detection pattern. These detectors you can happily mount up to 4 metres. In fact, you could happily mount them higher than 4 metres. It just means angling the detector down. Um, or any space in between there. Typically, you, you, it's somewhere going to be between about two and a half to maybe four and a half metres from the ground. Whether that's on a wall, uh, on a pole, on a camera pole, or anywhere that gets you the, um, the coverage pattern that you want. As well as the ADPRO detectors, there is one outdoor detector from Central, and that is the, the 6187 CTXN, a bit of a mouthful. Um, but what this has in particular that I've never seen on, on detectors is the last point that I've got here. The sensor handles an operating temperature from minus 40 degrees C to plus 50 degrees C with a 13 metre wide angle coverage. So if you have some extremely cold um, areas for detection, obviously whether it be outdoor, I mean this potentially could even go in a, a, a freezer. Um, I haven't seen any other detectors, and there may be others, but I'm not aware of any, that can go down to minus 40 degrees C and still operate quite happily. Obviously with that temperature range, the entire case on this is sealed, obviously including all entries. So it really is um, ideal for any place where there is extreme weather, dust, shock, um, or obviously um, extremes in temperature. So I thought that might be worth mentioning also. When we talk about PE beams, um, you'll see later on that we have a range of Siemens and Central um, or, or Aratec um, PE beams that have both a quad and a dual beam in them. But um, we have a, a range of, um, of towers that come from a, a, an Italian company called Cigarette. These have both, they've got here an absolute plus or an absolute plus digital version. They come in in three ranges, um, a maximum of 200 metres in range, 80 metres or 50 metres. And the towers can come in a variety of heights. They might start at two metres and, and work their way up. And uh, you've got full ability to put um, one or more sets of beams within that beam tower. Typically you could fit somewhere between five and eight on a two metre set, um, depending on whether you're putting a, a microwave in there as well, which this picture is demonstrating. And I suppose the advantage of having a PE beam tower with another form of detection, i.e. microwave, does make this a whole lot more stable than a PE beam by itself. And we'll go through the advantages of that on the on the next slide, um, as well as having multiple uh, beams in the stack and a microwave, it also has the ability that you can add a camera in this stack as well, and that camera will be looking from end to end. So basically, whenever an alarm is generated, you could have a you know a recording or a picture come up that shows you the activity line of sight that's happening on this beam tower and that's uh, in, enclosed within the, the tower itself. What are the advantages of having this set up rather than just an infrared PE beam or a, a conventional microwave? Um, animals and birds can affect beams, leaves can affect beams, sunlight can also be reflected off the PE beam cells and calls either false alarms or um, uh, it, it won't go into alarm in some occasions. Uh, microwaves are affected by high frequency noises, radiations from fences or, or, or anything metallic. 
um, and potentially can cause problems under fluorescent light. You can see that by combining both and having it so both need to go off at the same time that we can eliminate all those potential problems with um, the environment. As for normal PE beams, Siemens has a, a range of twin and quad uh, element detectors. Uh, you can see there that I've put that they're equivalent to uh, another brand. Um, the equivalent there is these are the, exactly the same as the TACX uh, product. They, came, they come out of the same factory. So we've got a 20, 40 and 60 metre for a twin or a 50, 100 or 200 metre, um, and these are outdoor ranges for the quad beam. Working exactly the same way, can be wall or pole mounted. Um, these, detect, uh, these beams can also be um, mounted in a, um, a, a pole also, if you want multiple coverage. As well as the Siemens, we have a, a full range of Aratec um, PE beams. Um, the DO510 is the only PE beam um, that we have at the moment that is SCEC approved, and that has a 100 metre outdoor range, and that's the picture on the, the bottom right. Uh, there is a full range of uh, Aratec detectors ranging from 20 up to 200 metres, all for outdoor use, and these two can be mounted in freestanding um, barriers or towers. Geoquip. Geoquip is a, a company that have been around for, for many, many years. They're a UK company. Um, we've had uh, dealings with these guys for probably 15 years in Australia now. The, you know, they've got a number of products. The two products that we'll be talking about today is firstly the Impactor. The Impactor uh, comes as a kit. It comes with a, a processor, a length of cable that can either be 25, 50 or 75 metres in length and uh, an end of line box. This cable on this particular product would be mounted on a wall of something, a brick wall, a concrete wall, uh, a Bessa brick wall, um, anywhere where there is the fear of gross attack, and that may be, you know, by a ram raid, um, sledgehammer, chiseling, any means of getting through that that wall. Uh, on the next slide, we'll show you how the system goes together. It's it's no more complicated than installing a PIR in the sense that we have an analyzer that requires 12 volt DC and has alarm and tamper outputs. Out of there comes your length of cable, as I said in 25, 50 or 75 meters, and then a little box at the end. Typically in this environment, that sensor cable would be I mean, it can be just attached to the wall, but typically you would install it in conduit uh, to give it extra protection. So hence, a number of things, a number of advantages of that is, one, it's much harder to identify what coverage um, it, the, your security has, or in fact, it's even hard to determine that it is security. All you're seeing is a, um, a, a conduit run along your, typically the inside of a wall, um, it can happily mount on the outside of a wall if it's impossible to install after, let's say, um, racking or shelving has gone up. Uh, its whole purpose is to detect any form of vibration, noise or movement on that wall. So where a, a PIR or a PE beam or any other form of internal detection is obviously only going to detect after you get through that wall. This will detect well and truly before um, any damage is done or, or, or any um, access is gained through breaking down that wall. So it gives you immediate detection 
um, in a very convenient to install system. Um, and set, setting up of, of this processor involves nothing more than a couple of minutes work. Um, you don't need a PC, you don't need any software, you don't need any particular knowledge. Uh, obviously it just helps if you can read the manual and um, that's very straightforward also. So some of the advantages or, or, or installation types, as I said, any solid wall, concrete or brick, um, where you're concerned with RAM rating, gross attack, hammering or chiseling to get in. An application would include things like a bond store, a warehouse, any place that has you know, high value goods, electronics or fine art. Um, very easy to install, all you're doing is running a cable in a conduit and you're terminating it at two ends. So a very straightforward installation. You get 100% detection. It will go off if someone tries to um, come through that wall. Uh, an almost non-existent false alarm rate. And ultimately, it's basically impossible to defeat or disable because again, this conduit is in, uh, this cable is installed in a conduit on a wall that um, if you cut it, broke it, or damaged it, it's going to come up with a, a tamper alarm immediately as well. So very hard to get around. The other product, or one of the other products from Geoquip, is the Defensor series. Uh, this product is SCEC uh, approved also, and this product is typically installed on a, a chain link fence. Basically, any fence construction will work with this product. Uh, as with the impactor, you've got a processor, a length of cable, in this case we can go up to 300 metres for a zone, and an end of line unit. You can also purchase things called gate loop kits that allow you to include uh, pedestrian or vehicle gates um, in the circuit. There's also additional junction boxes that if you wanted to join um, the cable if it was damaged, so rather than replace all of it, you can just um, repair it. Uh, the processing on here is um, certainly all digital. Again, it's extremely easy to set up. The system performance is has, again, 100% catch performance. It will pick you up if you attempt to climb over or cut through the fence and has an extremely low false alarm rate. Um, it does mention on here, it's got there, it's backed by the Defensor Performance Pledge, um, which still exists, and what that, what that is, is um, a guarantee by GEOQIP that if you wanted to test this system against any other system that's commercially available out there in the field, um, that if we supervise the testing and the installation where their system and our system is installed on the fence together, that we guarantee that our system will outperform their system. If it doesn't, GEOQIP or AlarmCorp will happily pay for the test competitor system that was installed there. So it takes a lot of, um, I suppose, balls for want of a better word, that um, to put your money where your mouth is to ensure that we believe that this system, in terms of catch performance and false alarm immunity, is the best that's possible out there in the field. This particular system, again, we've got installations that probably go back 15 years or more. So it's a very proven product, not only in the world, but certainly in the Australian market. Um, there's a picture of what the cable looks like. It's for all intents and purposes from outside, looks like a, a coax cable, but it is a, a specialised manufactured cable at GeoQuip that has two conductors that are, are freely movable within its jacket and can detect the most minute um, uh, vibration on the fence that it's connected to. So as I said, up to 300 metres of detection per zone. It's SCEC approved. It's very, again, very easy to install. It doesn't require a computer, doesn't require any software. 
um, has all of the controls and lights on the processor at the fence and quite literally if it took you more than five minutes to, um, to commission it's taken you probably far too long. The, this cable on the Defensor works on any type of fence, chain link, palisade, world mesh, even timber, concrete and brick. Um, we have applications where all of those fence types have been used. Um, most microphonic fence systems hate palisade or world mesh fence. Um, the alpha cable on the Defensor works absolutely brilliantly with any fence construction. Products from Siemens, there are seismic detectors. The GM730 is a SCEC approved detector. There is the GM730 which has a 4 metre radius, in other words has a 4 metre range around the detector. The GM760 has a 5 metre radius around the detector. Um, typically a 730 is used on things like ATMs, ticket machines, vending machines, you know, lightweight steel construction, um, things like an ATM. Um, can happily mount on, on concrete and brick walls as well. Um, the GM760 normally is for larger things, a bigger safe or a vault. You can see here there's some pictures of how they've tried to, I suppose, get through large construction so it can work with or it can detect an oxygen lance, drilling, water jets or explosion. In the banking industry they're predominantly used in ATMs and, their, and all of their safes and vaults. Um, in the high security market, um, there's loads of applications, but the typical application at the moment is on ammunition stores, uh, where they would have one on every wall and on the ceiling to detect any form of grosser attack. So we can see here with the, the 730, a typical application is an ATM, a night safe, a vending machine, safe, strong room um, and doors. With the 760, has a slightly larger range, as I said, um, typically for larger things, safes, strong rooms, can also work on an ATM, um, or new types of safes that have a, a modular or a lightweight synthetic material um, within the body of the, the steel housing. Other than a, a seismic detector, Siemens have a, a product called a, it's an electronic vibration detector. It's got an ES400. This product is also SCEC approved. Um, typical applications is where you want to detect um, glass breakage or vibration on things like window frames, door frames, walls. It's got here ceiling and floors as well. You can see the, the detection coverage down the bottom for steel, wood and plywood. It can work to about a 3 metre radius. Brick and paving, about 2 metre and concrete, a 1 metre radius. So with our seismics, they could happily work on concrete and, and paving stone and give you a 4 or a 5 metre range, more than this of course. Um, not really going to work on wood and plywood. So this is where an ES400 would come into its own, where you have a lightweight construction material, wood, plywood, that you want to have some form of ram raid or, or sledgehammer protection. Um, again, in the, in the high security world, this would typically be installed on each window frame for a window where other forms of protection don't work or can't work. Um, typical scenario would be the perimeter of a building where the outside of the building is not secure, so therefore you can't have outdoor detectors or, or PE beams um, or VMD cameras. 
um, that you really do want to protect and get an alarm before entry into the building. So in this case, smash glass, um, a knockdown door would um, be um, picked up with the ES400. Switches. There's, as, as I've got here, a switch for every application. Um, we could happily have a couple of webinars just on central switches. There's probably a good couple of hundred in the range. Um, some of these are also SCEC approved. There are the three central switches that can be used in Type 1 installations. But typically these are more for commercial applications. So in the case of you know, our perimeter that this webinar is on, you know, you might want a, a, a roller shutter switch on a gate, um, flush mount switches on a, a, a fire door. There is quite literally, if there is an application for a, a, a read switch, we will have a switch to look after that, um, that requirement. If you wanted to find more on the central switches in particular, or I suppose any of our products, you can happily go to our uh, website and it will list all the variants and uh, all of the pictures of those products. And I'll flick those details up um, on the next slide. So if you would like to know more, happily go to alarmcorp.com.au and browse through any of the, the products that are there. And all of the products that we've spoken about today are listed on our website. You can register on our website um, to get full e-commerce. Um, uh, entry which will give you pricing and give you the ability to order any of our products online at your convenience. So you can do that at any time of the day or night um, and all of the information you'll, you'll see there. If you do want to find out more, please con uh, contact Jonathan Johnson in New South Wales on the email or the phone number that's there or Steve Dinger in our southern region, uh, also on the email or the, the phone number that's listed. Or you can happily contact myself, um, Jeff Rushton at jmr at alarmcorp.com.au. We have uh, a number of CCTV webinar, uh, webinars coming up uh, in the coming months. The next one is on the 13th of July on UTC fire and security DVR portfolio. So of the various DVRs available through UTC and how they integrate and uh, probably a little bit on the software there. Um, if you would like the schedule of these webinars forwarded to you so you can um, register in advance, please send me an email and I'll happily forward you the schedule and you can um, register well beforehand. But regardless, um, the invitation for these is normally sent out about a week before our webinars to give you the opportunity of registering and um, participating in, um, in, in these sessions. Uh, and as you can see, there's one there for, for every month through the remainder of the year. Also, for the end of this financial year, we're running a, a number of specials. I'm just showing you here some of the intrusion specials, which relate to quite a few of the Aratech and Central products. Um, there is no pricing listed here, so if you would like to get a copy of that, please also send me an email, and we can forward you all of our specials with the pricing that is available through to the uh, end of the financial year uh, and some of the specials that will be running through to the end of August as well. Uh, if you haven't written down any of those details, you can happily just send an email straight to sales at alarmcorp.com.au and um, we can certainly take any of your inquiries. Um, I have a number of questions here that I need to go through. So that sort of concludes the content of the webinar, but, um, but I'm happy to, to stay around for a little while and answer some of your questions. 
Um, the first one related to SCEC uh, endorse or approved products. Um, I did list those as we went through. Certainly, um, if we skip back to the top, uh, we've got our uh, perimeter product, the the defensor product. We've got our GM730 from a seismic. We've got our ES400 from a, a vibration. There are a number of central switches, as I said, that are also approved. So, and they're also listed on our site. We have a, a separate category called um, SCEC. And if you click on that, all of our products, whether it be in the ones that we've shown you today or all of our other products that have approval are listed on our website. Um, question, how is the GeoClip impactor sensor cable attached to walls? What secures it to the wall and are there limitations with the method of attaching, i.e. metal interference? Um, the kit comes just with cable clips that can be nailed into a wall. Typically, I would suggest that wouldn't be how you do it. I would recommend that you put the cable in some form of conduit whether it be PVC or whether it be um, um, metal conduit. Um, metal would be better. Um, probably the skill of guys these days to install metal conduit is, is maybe not up to scratch. PVC will happily work just as well and it does a couple of things. I mean it further protects the cable against damage. It makes it for a, a much cleaner, nicer installation than just um, uh, clipping the, the cable onto a wall and obviously offers additional protection. Um, metal interference is not an issue. All of the GeoQuip products typically would mount on a, a metal fence. So metal walls, wall, door frames do not affect the, um, uh, have no limitation on this system at all, have no effect. Um, will it pick up if you attempt to tunnel under the fence? Um, typically not. This is a, a fence protection system, so it will pick up any activity on the fence. So you climbing over it, you leaning something on the fence to climb over it, you cutting through the fence. If you attempt to dig or tunnel under the fence, in the dirt or, or whatever that's around the, the fence structure, it is probably very unlikely that it would pick you up. If you wanted to limit the, the ability for that, um, you would need to install, in my opinion, uh, concrete footings that go across the, the fence and hold the poles in place and go down to a depth that you're happy with to ensure that no one is likely to, to dig under the, the fence. Um, and if that was still a concern, that's where I would use the, the microphonic fence system in conjunction with some of the ADPRO beams. So then if, if someone did happen to get inside the perimeter by some other means than cutting or climbing over the fence, at least then you have a second line of, um, of coverage. Um, can the defensor be connected to any alarm panel? The defensor or impactor simply uh, almost take any voltage, anything from 8 volt DC up to 30 volt DC, so, and very little current consumption, you know, in the order of about 5 or 10 milliamps maximum. So any alarm panel happily power the, um, the product, and it has a relay output for both alarm and tamper, so it can connect to any, any panel at all. There's no question with that. Um, someone's also asked a question, a very obscure question, but I'll answer it anyway. Um, and I think it's in relating to our seismic detectors. If they're mounted, let's say, on concrete, can they pick up acid eating through the concrete? The answer is no. Um, one of our customers did ask this quite a number of months ago and said that they had a formula that would eat through concrete in a couple of days. I said, good luck to you. 
if that's what you want to do. Um, it won't pick up things like that. This has to be a, a vibration, a bash, a knock. It has to be consistent. Um, so any other form of attack, if there is any other form of attack, let's say by, by eating through it with acid, um, no, uh, I'm not aware of any product that will detect um, that sort of activity. Uh, is there any other questions before we uh, finish up for today? Okay, well on that note, certainly like to thank you for your attendance here today. I hope it was worthwhile. Uh, please feel free to subscribe or um, register for any of our other webinars for the rest of the year. And thanks again and um, good afternoon.